Greetings and welcome, everybody. Today is April 18, or rather, 18th of April, 2021. And I'm joined here with Michael in Germany, and we are going to embark on a new topic today. And it's a very special topic that involves a very, very large agenda. And um, I want to start out with a little quote from the Bible, Matthew 18, 20. For where two or three are gathered in my name in their midst of them. Uh, there I am in the midst of them, excuse me. <laughs> I was anticipating in the midst I shall be, but uh, this is Matthew 18. Um, but uh, Michael, I'm sure you're very anxious to get right into the script you've worked so hard to labor to make. Yeah, welcome, Brett, and welcome, dear listeners. Again, uh, I did uh, take a break for almost four four weeks, uh, not making any sessions at all because uh, the research and uh, the extensive preparation for that kind of uh, big, 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 big subject is very, very time consuming. And um, you see that my purpose is to get people into thinking because I think that uh, self-education purposes are very much underestimated today and they are not that absolutely unwanted. Every government, every educational purposes wants you to take, take things as granted and just uh, to report them from your memory but not to think of them again or to get into the context. And so I think that the majority of people have to get used to the fact that they have their, to use their own brain cells to get to the nitty gritty, to get to the bottom of all. And in our technological world where people cannot imagine how life could be achieved without a smartphone without a microwave oven or even without television people are so dependent on technology i think that people cannot imagine life without science life without technology and life without any kind of improvement because people are getting more and more kind of lazy and so i like to erect the question is science the new religion and if you think about that, uh, Psalms 14 came into my mind, and I would like to ha ask Brad to read it. Yes, Psalms 14, to the chief musician, a psalm of David. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. So the truth is Jesus Christ. Not uh, in any kind, shape or form uh, attacking some non-believers here, but you see that is really science the truth? Or is science a belief system? There is a big, big difference between believing and knowing. If somebody approaches you and says, well... Science tells us that uh, the moon is that far away. Science tells us that uh, this or that and this improvement or this achievement. And so is it belief or is it knowledge? If you believe the media, then it's just a belief. You do not know it because you cannot handle the fact. You cannot test it. You cannot verify the information. So most of the things which is used to be presented as science or truth is simply belief because we cannot prove it. It's too far away, it's too subtle, it's too delicate, and it's just only for the so-called experts. And you might get a hint where this can be going to. Is science the new religion? Is it? You see, we're so dependent on technology that nobody can uh, get along without a personal computer. Nobody can get along without uh, any kind of technical uh, issues like a pocket calculator. People nowadays cannot calculate on their own. They have to use a pocket calculator or their smartphone. So their phone is smart, but how smart are we? 
why do we need a smartphone? Because actually, we have to depend on technology to get along in that technology world outside. We cannot get along without that. So everybody demands that you go digital, that you pay with your credit card. And nowadays, in the in days of lockdown, pupils are connected via the laptop or a tablet or a smartphone to their teachers. So this, this means that everybody is connected. We are connected in a technological world. And science could be the new religion because everybody depends on that and everybody believes that science is good for people. But what is science anyway? What is science? What's the definition of science? What's the definition of knowledge? What is it all about? Is it really that simple or is it maybe very, very much complicated? So we're going into the script now, which I have prepared. So sorry for any typos, any mistakes in it. It is far from perfect. I know that. But nevertheless, I did my best to have a little bit of a train of thoughts here. First mm, Timothy chapter six, verse 20. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so-called. Yeah, If we go into the nature of science, what we like to know or what we believe, how the world is running, then we have to approach the fact that we can be fooled because we are no expert in the field. There is a quote which is in Latin, which calls uh, Mundus vult dicipi ergo dicipiatur. Yeah, I know it's a Latin phrase, so I doubt the origin of Luther because I just found it on the internet, but actually it's about uh, somebody else. It's, it's uh. like uh, famous quotes from Voltaire, which he has never issued. And so okay. you see that uh, apart from that, um, the this the slogan is in latin language so also only can only originate from people who are so called educated because latin in the middle ages was only the language used to be the language of the so called higher educated people the clergies yeah these kind of people so it is not uh, any kind uh, of uh, of a regular uh, quote from just uh, just a regular citizen well there is definitely something to be said for that michael it's interesting you bring that up because you know this uh Former Jesuit uh, Alberto Rivera had made the statement that the Latin language is the language of the Antichrist, and I believe he was uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. very close to the truth on that, if not a hundred percent. We cannot we cannot uh, prove what it's all about, but uh, the internet says it's a quote of the uh, Pope Paul the Fourth. So um, I, I would not like to, to go especially into that. <laughs> oh, wow. But, <laughs> but uh, anyway. <laughs> that's deep in history. Yes, it is. That's deep in Thank history. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, but you see that the world will be deceived because this world is being ruled by Satan. That would make much more sense uh, that a pope mm. would say this rather than uh, Martin Luther, yes. Yeah, you see that this Pope is Paul IV. He lived from 1476 to 1559 and died 1559 in Rome. So it was in the time when Martin Luther was uh, was living. Ah, in, that's and, right. That's in interesting. Huh? So it's Pope, very, it's very Pope Paul IV. during his time. Yeah, during his time. Yeah, mm -hmm. interesting. So the, world's want, the world wants to be deceived, so she will be deceived. Because many people, or the majority of people, are in the Antichrist spirit. And Antichrist spirit means Satan, and Satan is the father of lies. I could have inserted here John 8.44, but nevertheless, I think that the regular visitors of that program are totally aware of the uh, most quoted uh, Bible verses, and I think that John 8.44 is one of them. Okay, so then let's move on. So you see here, this is a spiral, which is also be a, a synonym, a symbol for hypnosis. And this is a pendulum. 
and what does it what does it have to do with the pendulum? I think you will see uh, <laughs> you will see very very soon in the next upcoming session. So I think that everybody who is undergoing the world science will have a hard time because uh, nowadays people think that everything has been proved and 100 percent uh, bulletproof. And I can tell you, as far as I have looked into the matter, it is absolutely not. It's been presented as proof, but there is much debate, but not in the mass media. And so I thought it would be a very nice topic because you won't see or won't hear anything about that topic in the mainstream media. Okay, so if we can say that we are deceived in our regular life because people do intend to lie, people tend into the, to twist words, people intend not to speak the truth. You have so many secret services, you have so many secret societies out there, they don't tell you anything and if they don't tell you the truth. So the world wants to be deceived because the world has been run by Satan, the god of this world. And he's the father of lies. So naturally, the world, this world is full of lies. And how subtle that is, that is very interesting. But I think that first of all, we have to go to the, um, to, to the source of it all. The Bible says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge in Hosea 4.6. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood toucheth blood. Therefore shall the land mourn, and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish with beasts of the field, and with the fowls of heaven, yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Yet let no man strive, nor reprove another, for thy people are as they that strive with, a, with the priest. Therefore shalt thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night and I will destroy thy mother. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Yeah, thank you very much. If you look up the word science, it will be explained uh, as knowledge. But what is knowledge? Because the Lord says that his people, so his tribe, his chosen one, are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Which means that we have to face the fact that we have to look up for the real knowledge in the Bible, in the word of God. He says there is no truth. No knowledge of God in the land. So you have exactly the same combination. Truth is knowledge of God. There's no mercy. Yeah, also. Yeah, imagine that. I think, yeah. Michael, we are entering into a, a time where we are losing what I would call grace and mercy because of this society is becoming very agitated. Mm -hmm. Very agitated. Not so. just in Europe, but in the United States as well. We're, we're, the Western world is uh, really on a really disturbing collision course. And someone, I think it was a, was it a, uh, a bishop in Africa, Michael, had mentioned that. And he was... Uh, he was uh, demoted. He lost his position as a bishop because he spoke out against mm -hmm. the agenda. Mm. This is recent, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't have the article in front of me, but it, it's, it's interesting what's really going on here. And this is the book of, of Hosea. He lived from uh, about 750 before Christ. 
in uh, Israel or in, uh, of course, uh, what Israel now is 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 about, and um, it's the beginning of the book of the twelve prophets. You see that the thing is that he's one of the prophets, so he's saying that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. This is the message which was handed over to him by the Almighty Lord, because thou hast rejected knowledge. They have a lack of knowledge because they have rejected the knowledge. And when they reject the knowledge of God, he, they will also be rejected by God. Because if they reject the word of God and the real knowledge, they will be rejected too. It's interesting But, in verse 2, Michael, that it says, By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out. So, swearing... Isn't swearing to make an oath? Mm -hmm. And we're not to take oaths. Yeah, especially against other people. Yes, that's right. That's right. Yeah, it, it was, was ordained by Jesus Christ in the New Testament, but we're speaking of the Old Testament here, and you see that when there is no truth, when you have no knowledge of the things, uh, you easily can easily be deceived, and I think that's the problem. Your knowledge, uh, you can, without knowledge of God, you can easily be deceived by the serpent or Satan, which is ex exactly the same spirit. So it's all about deceivement. It, it goes all back about the, 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 the book of Genesis, actually, in, in, in chapter 3. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So because the, set, the serpent was so subtle, yeah, and he's very clever, he's very smart. Yeah. So I came up with the idea, if science means knowledge, what is knowledge anyway? In Hosea 4.6 in the ESORT software, which is free of charge, It doesn't cost anything. It's been explained as Hebrews 18.47, as knowledge, knowledge. Huh? So, to know something, that's Hebrews. It's the Old Testament, it's uh, from Hebrews. To, to know something, to really have knowledge. And it's just that people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So, they would not be destroyed if they had the knowledge. But what kind of knowledge can we expect in the fallen world? in a world which has been run by Satan, the father of lies. So that majority of the so-called science nowadays and also in the ancient times is false, must be false, because we are living here in the kingdom of Satan. Well, I would say simply it's even more subtle, Michael. It's, it's not that Satan controls it. It's that he's influenced his control over it. In other words, it's not yet complete... It can be complete if you make the agreement, yes. But it's still up to that soul that is witnessing, yes? Because this is speaking of the children of Israel. <clears throat> my people, mm -hmm. God's saying my people are destroyed for a lack of biblical knowledge, I would add. <laughs> it really mm -hmm. is. Yeah, simple. sure, sure. It sure. really is simple when you get down to it, but... Uh, it's connected to God, so it must be biblical of... When you change the religion, you, ch you change the way you observe the rituals. That's why ritualistic uh, worship is such a trouble. And uh, see, that's what we're getting. We're getting to this point where... You can't speak of, of politics or religion in any social circumstances. Well, <laughs> how are you going to witness, dear Israel, dear children of Israel today? How are you going to witness to your brothers and sisters if you don't speak out against the enemy? Hmm? It has been mentioned also in the Old Testament, so speaking about the Israelites. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, That's we're not right. speaking about the the pagans here or somebody else, but it's just God is speaking to His tribe. God is speaking for that that they he that the people will be rejected for the lack of knowledge because they don't they they reject the knowledge of God. They reject the word of God. They reject the Bible. They reject to be educated in the word of God. 
And if you look it up, the uh, the root of uh, Hebrews 18.47 has been mentioned from Hebrews uh, 3.045. And that means knowledge, known, and um, to know by experience also. So you only know something when you have experienced it. So people simply can be educated to trust the word of God, but not to trust the word of man. And nowadays, people who reject the word of God, they simply listen to the word of man. And so they will be deceived because the majority of people are in the Antichrist spirit, in the father of lies. And people wouldn't like to be experts, they would like to be so wise. And they would like to stand out, they would like to receive a social status, etc. And so we are the, the, the just two people here in uh, examining what really science and knowledge is all about. And this is the first hint coming from the Old Testament of the Bible, the book of, of Hosea, which means that uh, people will be rejected for the lack of knowledge. So it is utterly important to have knowledge but what kind of knowledge it is biblical knowledge or the original knowledge would people have been living in harmony with nature and god so in harmony with the creator and nowadays you you, you think of people are totally dependent on technology people people are totally um, living outside of nature or natural environment they don't know uh, how to live in the forest. They don't know how to build houses of wood. They don't know how to make fire with their hands, something like that. They've absolutely been uh, tossed away um, from the the simplest things. They just only function in this technological science world, in this uh, artificial world, where everything has to be connected with electricity, which has the symbol of uh, Satan, which is the lightning bolt, and also the symbol of the Greek uh, father god or the, the head god Zeus, also the symbol of the lightning. So we are totally dependent on electricity. We cannot do anything on our with our own hands to survive, um, except few of us. Uh, but nowadays, I find it very astonishing and a little bit terrifying that we are so dependent on technology. Of course, we also use technology at this moment to uh, hand over this information. But nevertheless, uh, we would be far better off if we live more uh, closer to nature, together with plants, animals. So 99% of the people don't know what is eatable on, on fruits and plants out there. We do not have the knowledge because the government, the society, the education, the schools don't provide us with the very important knowledge. They only provide us with the things that we ought to know, but not with the things which are really important to know. And so this is just a little bit more uh, a deeper uh, examination in the field of things that actually the very important things we do not learn in school. We do not learn in school what, what really was about the creation of the world. We do not know how to survive in the wood. We do not know how to choose the, the, the appropriate life partner. They just fill us with empty knowledge of, of their kind. Then just you have to get the things uh, from memory to achieve good grades to make it in this world. But you don't know that much if you have been uh, graduated or if you're coming from the university you're an expert in your field but apart from that you don't know anything you don't know anything you cannot survive outside without the society imagine that that the current will be lost so there there will be no electricity and i i guarantee you within 48 hours people go, go nuts they go nuts we are not educated how to survive, how to make it on this earth. We are not. And I think that could be from by purpose. It is not by accident. I think it is by purpose. So that you're, max, that you're absolutely dependent from the state, from the government, from the school education system. Without that, you do not get a doctor. You do not get food. You do not get a shelter. You cannot do anything without being in line with the authorities and using smart 
items or electricity. You cannot do without. And this for me is uh, being totally apart from the creation as it was originally meant to be. To live together with other peoples in a tribe, to spread out to the entire world, to breathe fresh air, to to yeah to to make a living to live together with animals and nowadays you see at these all these these big cities with all the skyscrapers all the the steel buildings and all the polluted air something like that it has nothing to do what actually would be very healthy for your body and especially also for your mind so I think it is it, it is a sign of our times that people are being drawn away uh, from from nature and also from the creator, of course, uh, to be under the the yoke of the so-called uh, society or of uh, so-called science. And this is just the first hint: knowledge. Uh, science means knowledge, so but uh, it is not the knowledge of the, which is described in the Bible, which is the knowledge that we are all being taught in the schools or universities, in the educational system. It is absolutely something else, and that's what we are going to find out very soon. You see, knowledge in the English room comes from the early 20th, 12th century, acknowledgement of a superior honor worship. Aha! Of a superior, mm. yeah. for, from to know, to know something, yeah, a capacity for knowing, understanding, a fact or a condition of knowing, yeah. So knowledge, of course, as a noun, comes from to know something, yeah, and also from information. Of course, you need information to learn and to know some things. So you believe you know some things when somebody has handed over the information. But first of all, of course, you have to prove if the information is correct. But most of the times you cannot do that. You have to rely on people. Yeah. So knowledge has something to do with information. And here in the first uh, book uh, of the Bible, uh, first Moses in German and uh, Genesis in uh, the English uh, language, it's been here that, um, oh, let, me, let me see again, where is it here? It's Hebrew 7919. It is, uh, and when the women saw the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. You, I think we all know that story. So pardon my brother Brett that I read this uh, small verse, but you see that to make one wise. Usually, we think that if somebody has a profound amount of knowledge, this is a wise guy. The problem is that what kind of knowledge does he provide? Here, wisdom, or to be wise, is being translated in Hebrew 7919, uh, sakal, which means consider expert, in expert. Aha. So, to make one wise means to be an expert interesting to have yes, skills to instruct to prosper prudence yeah. skill have good success teach understand wisdom behave self consider make wise mm -hmm. guide wittingly guide wittingly yes so the serpent deceived eve and promised her to get wise yeah? A tree to be desired to make one wise. Because you see that God has forbidden to take any fruit of that particular tree in the midst of the garden. The tree between which uh, is about knowledge. Between good and evil. What's it about, Brad? You see that if the tree was forbid to, to be used by man, must be dangerous knowledge. And also, um, but the women, True. Eve, yes, yes, if if here in that case, she wanted to be wise. She wanted to become an expert. She wanted to be taught. She wanted to understand everything. She wanted to be like God. 
Well, because the, she thing it, the thing of it is, Michael, she didn't ask her husband about it, did she? Mm-hmm. No. That's not what the scripture is saying. Mm-hmm. Of course, because you, you see, the tree was not only good for food. Every tree with fruits is good for for food, of course, but ah, that it was, was good for wisdom. It was pleasant to the eye, so she was deceived by the looks. Can you imagine how many vanity? Girls, can you imagine uh, what my preferences were when I was younger? Oh, I had the most loveliest women. Uh oh. By, by looks. <laughs> yeah. By looks. You're not alone, Michael. Yeah. By looks. Superficial. Vanity, pleasant to the eyes. But I missed, I missed, I missed when I was younger, I missed the real lovely ones. Because I was superficial, as Eve was here, because the tree was pleasant to the eyes, and she said, Oh, I would like to have that very much. <sighs> and a tree to be desired to make one wise. So she wanted to be wise, or she wanted to be wiser. Wiser than who? Then her husband, maybe, in the first pl- instant, could only mean that she wanted to be wiser. And she took the fruit and did eat. And she gave her husband, and he also did eat. But yes, I'm going here to knowledge and wisdom and science. And science means knowledge. So at knowledge, we know you have to have information to know something. And the knowledge comes from a superior or the, comes from a teacher, something like that. So knowledge is very much appreciated in our day and age. So the women took the fruit and eat. And so she became wise. <laughs> no, she became thrown out of the paradise. So if somebody tells you, oh, if you have that information, it would be very wise to follow the rules or the instructions or so, it could be that you will be deceived. Because what I did miss here is that God said in the first verse of the chapter 3 is that the serpent was more subtle than any other beast of the field. So people or spirits can deceive you if you want to be very smart and if you want to become like gods. Oh, Michael, and I might add, this is a very troubling instance for our youth because they are presented with both definitions and you must choose between the two definitions which one is correct. And when you choose the wisdom of the serpent, Guess what? You fall into Satan's trap. And we fell into Satan's trap, didn't we, Michael? Everybody falls into Satan's trap. You see, now the serpent serpent was more subtle than any other beast of the field. And he said unto the women, Yeah, has God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Sure. But the, but the thing is, the promise of the serpent was, he shall not surely die, that's the lie, and then he shall be as God. So, wisdom means he shall be as God. So, everybody who has superior knowledge feels himself a little bit like a demigod. And you can imagine where this will lead to. Okay. In Romans 1.22, now switching over to Greek language, where because the New Testament was written in Greek, it's here professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And this time you have the same uh, verse, or you have, you have the same uh, name, wise, but it's now sophos, which comes from sophistry. This is such a bottomless pit, Michael. This is the foundation of it all. We have it is the foundation. Now, when you look up uh, sophists in the old ninth version of the Britannica, 
Uh, you're in for a very interesting lesson in Greek history. The sophists were actually far, far long before we had rhetoric. Rhetoric was in ancient Greece. It came into the Roman Empire easily, transferred just like water right in there into the Roman Republic. So, yeah, Michael, it is a bottomless pit we're entering. I'm sure you're well aware of this. Sure, but you have to be careful to use the words. You see that the words, you see that wise in the Bible does not necessarily mean the same if you look for wise in the Old Testament or in the New Testament or in any context. We have to get used to the fact that we have to prove everything uh, like the, uh, yes. if, it, if it is so. Right, so you're just basically proving right here, this is not biblical wisdom. This is worldly yeah. wisdom, yes. huge yes. difference. Yes, that's the point, that's the point, yeah. Wise means from vitos to know. So it's also about knowing something or to get knowledge about something. So then you are wise. And that what that's what the promise of the serpent. Ah, but we'll be wise as serpents and as harmless as doves comes yeah. to mind, Michael. Yeah, coming up also is very soon in the script, but uh, uh -huh. Ah, yes. You see, you see that uh, Eve said in the Garden of Eden that uh, the tree to be desired to make one wise, but wise here is sakal, which means to get to be an expert, yeah, to have wisdom, to have understanding. But now in the New Testament in Romans one twenty two, wise is being translated from the Greek word sophos, which means wise in the uh, in the context of sophistry. In general application, wise. But why there are so many people uh, nowadays uh, using sophistry? Yeah, a twist of words, actually, which is, which is a twist of words, and it's it's coming from the root five four two nine, and it's coming from uh, phronimos, and that means. Um, Intelligent, wise in its own conceits. Yeah, so it is. It is much, much, much uh, sophistry. Also, please remember, it has been written in Greek, and sophistry, sophos, has, is is been known coming from the Greeks, especially in Alexandria. If I'm aware of that. Absolutely. Yeah. So, which 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 means that we have to uh, differentiate, we have to differ what wisdom is and knowledge is. Is it biblical or is it uh, from the world, secular? Ah, here we go. From the ninth edition Britannica. I could take a photo of it and send it to you, Michael. Mm -hmm. But here it says, the sophist or quote-unquote man of wisdom was the name given by the Greeks about the middle of the 5th century B.C., to certain teachers of a superior grade who distingu distinguished themselves from philosophers on the one hand and from artists and craftsmen on the other, claimed to prepare their pupils not for any particular study or profession, but for civic life. Mm -hmm. For civic life. Let that sink in for a while. And this goes on for pages, pages, and it is a hard read because it's about Greek philosophy. Mm -hmm. Of course. So we cannot rely on the English language because uh, the Old and New Testament was not written in the English language at all. And the translation from the King James Bible is from the 17th century. So we have to get to the roots of the words, of the words actually, and not of the English word, which is the translation from the Hebrew or the Greek. For example, Brett pointed out the verse from Matthew 10, 16. 
please. Ah, yes, Matthew 10, 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Yeah, and this wise as serpents is now Greek 5, 4, 2, 9. And it's not Sophos anymore, but it's Phronimos. So you see that they were using in the English language for the translation of the King James Bible the exact English word, but from different Greek originals or origins. Yeah, so the wise as serpents comes from 5429, but uh, the so ah, it means to be discreet. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. That, uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, this is a spoiler now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that's the point. Oh, sorry, that, that's the point here in Romans. In yes. Romans, in Romans, wise is is sophistry. Yes, to my yes. knowledge, and uh, in when when Jesus uh, tells his uh, disciples, "I sent you forth as sheep, be as wise as serpents." It means phronimos. It means to have skill, to be intelligent. And to be discreet, so you be careful. Ah, you know, that's interesting, because, you know, Jesus was a carpenter. I do carpentry. I'll tell you what. <laughs> it takes skill to do these things. You can't just hack away at it. You're going to ruin it. But we will be attacked by people who are saying, wow, that's wise, that's wise, that's the same. No, it's not the same. It has a different meaning. And that's the thing with any language, any <laughs> meanings. We are entangled in a system that allows a word to be used in different ways. So we have different meanings for different words, and it's very confusing. Very confusing. Yeah, and, and, and who's the father of confusion? Ah, yes. We are very familiar with that on the satanic media agenda exposed yeah we we did we did two sessions on television and in one session of the television which we have already been uh, uploaded when this will uh, be published uh, we have been talked about the neologism the new speech or new speak from from George Orwell where words have a different meaning or being uh, totally uh, put together from two other nouns something like that and this is exactly the same here when you have only the English translation or the Dutch translation, the Spanish translation, whatsoever, you will miss a lot of things. So I would I would suggest anybody to download the ESOT software to look it up and to use the Strong's um, concordance and also maybe a dictionary, something like that, with Webster's, uh, et cetera, et cetera, to look up the real meaning of the words because there is so much, uh, yeah, it, it, it's so subtle. Uh, and, and, and if you also have a forged Bible like the New King James Version or the ESV or something like that, you are totally lost because then uh, words being exchanged or being uh, put away, some other context, etc., etc. But it's all sophistry. Mm -hmm. it's, it's sophistry nowadays. You, so they are twisting the word. They are twisting the word and say, oh, no, it doesn't mean that. It, it did mean that, but now it has a much more meaning. Because that's also the reason why they have to modify all these Bibles to get them into context, into the new educational system and into new speech. And it, you see, it, it, it is a forgery. It is a modification and it is not the original context. This is not the original context, not the original content, and not the original world. Even, even so. Yet you see that if you see wise and you see different roots of the world, then it means something else, especially in context. And then I looked up the definition of sophistry and I came up with the uh, website thoughtcode.com and he says, reasoning that appeared sound but is misleading or fallacious is known as sophistry. Misleading. It leads you away from the truth. 
and uh, just looking at that definition, I looked up the next word, which is metaphysics in etymology online, and it says, the science of the inward and essential nature of things from the 1560s, plural in Middle English. Mm-hmm. Yes, so we have branch of speculation which deals with the first causes of things, unquote, from medieval Latin metaphysica. Interesting to study this. Very interesting, Michael. Uh, It's a slippery slope. (laughs) Aristotle defines sophistry as wisdom in appearance only. Hmm. So if people using sophistry and twisting the words and say, oh, no, 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 in my context, etc., etc., I have a modified text and this is much more uh, uh, experienced and I'm a professional in that uh, field, etc., people believe that because he's using sophistry and people think, oh, that sounds quite logical, but uh, <laughs> it has been used as a trick to twist the words even in Greek, which is more than 2,000 years old that trick and does does work also in 2021 wisdom in appearance only for example if you put on a coat and have a badge of honor or something like that or a, a title and yeah, people think you are smart yeah regardless what you're saying because you got a title yeah you can you you can be a, a, a trickster yeah, but as long as you are in a, in an official building and you wear the uh, the badge or something like that, people think that oh, you're kind of 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 somebody who is educated. Yeah, you don't have to say a word. People think oh, yeah, he's a what what else? He's a diplomat. He's a doctor. He's a professional. He's approved he must, by the state. He is approved by the state. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and sophistry, by definition, is a subtle, tricky, superficial, plausible, but generally fallacious method of reasoning. So subtle, subtle, subtle. So generally fallacious. That's, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So the serpent was more subtle than any other beast of the field. It goes back down to the Garden of Eden. To be subtle means to be very smart and to play tricks on you. People play tricks on you. It's wisdom in appearance only, which means it appears like to be wise, to think that way, to act like the way, to behave that, that way. Yeah, but it isn't. in reality, it is. it's sophistry underneath it all. It's sophistry, yes, it's sophistry. It's just in in the context and the general people think, oh, okay, but this has been issued or named or proclaimed by a famous politician (laughs) or a doctor or a scientist. Superficially plausible. Yeah, scientist, so he, he knows what he's doing because he's an expert. Expert means like we have experienced in the uh, Genesis uh, chapter 3, that Eve wanted to become an expert. Oh, I thought you were going to mention Tony Fauci. Just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I had to throw in a little humor. Okay. So, by the general fallacious method of reasoning, oh, and that came into my mind, the age of reason. Uh, fabulous theologically in a work by English and American politic, political activist Thomas Paine arguing for the philosophical polit- position of deism. It follows in a tradition of British deism and channels institutionalized religion and the legitimacy of the Bible. Yeah, oh, the legitimacy. The legitimacy. legitimacy. Yes, if we hadn't known that already. Ah, yes, of oh. Of course. Yeah, political radicalism as a result of the so-called French Revolution. And we all know that the French Revolution was done by purpose and not by accident and not by the general people, but by the people who have the knowledge to do so. Yeah, so the French Revolution officially was being uh, held up by Freemasons. Like oh, now. that's really interesting. You bring this up, Michael, because we touched on this 
yesterday in our Bible study. It is the fulfilling of prophecy, and it's a very, very, very potent fulfilling of prophecy in in the heart of Europe, in France. And you remember when we studied that little book by Albert Close, The Divine Program of the World's History, it stuck with me that France is the storm center, historically, this is the storm center of Europe. Mm. So, yes, great political upheaval in the French Revolution, yes. Yeah, sure, but it just for the for the general public that they think that oh they have overthrown the government they have overthrown the monarchy, and now the people are in power. It's just um, it's just like a Hollywood movie. They really think so. They really think so. Two hundred and twenty three years later, after the French Revolution officially took place, people really think that they have democracy in France. Yeah, it's, it's, it's <laughs> yeah, they really think You're so. right, Michael. They really do. It's, it's, uh, it's something else, yes. Yeah. Just something else. Yeah. So this is ev every, everything the same, but you see that, uh, go to Emmanuel Macron, which is the French president, and look it up. Uh, what his connections to secret societies are. These are not the, by, by far, in any case, uh, the representatives of the common people. Give me a break. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have a diplomacy status. You are far more equal than others. You're being protected by secret service. You're, uh, you're that far away from the general public. And I, I, I ran across an uh, in official... Uh, event in in france where some uh, pupils were uh, waving to emmanuel macron just just an example and uh, somebody told him hey emmanuel come over here something like that and he educated that person i am the president of the of of the french republic and you have to say president or something like that yeah he's not he's not somebody for the common people he's a ruler Mm -hmm. or a, an actor ruling something like that so if you are coming down to reasonable arguments where sophistry is being known for or in the modern times the age of education something like that i was running into the things that that is the age of reason is the challenging of uh, religions and the legitimacy of the bible and they view the bible as an ordinary piece of literature so it's just uh, one of the few and rather than a divinely inspired text, of course, because, yes, of course. because it promotes natural religion, argues for the existence of a creator God. Ah, oh, the natural man. The oh, natural man. That and of rings course, a bell. Yeah, of course, these are the Georgia Guidestones located in Alberton, and people do, do mm -hmm. think, oh, it has something to do with that. Um, it has been erected by some kind of RCC Christian. RC Christian. Uh, Roman Catholic uh, Christian company. <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, nobody, no, it can't so, be somebody, that. somebody erected a big monument and nobody knows anything. You really believe that. So it means that in, information or knowledge, knowledge consists of information, are being withheld from us. So it is absolutely clear who has ordered the workers to erect that monument. Because there must be bills who have been paid. There must be money. Somebody must own that property, etc., etc. So give me a break by telling me that nobody knows who has erected that. Of course, people know, but not Wikipedia. Wikipedia doesn't know anything. But it is a stone tablet with ten rules. Something plops up in your mind, maybe. It could be that these are the new ten commandments. And why? Just to, to look it up, uh, uh, why it has been located, especially there in Georgia. I it, it mean, it's, it's a Georgia guide stone. No? So it, it's a guide. It's a stone which guides you in the age of reason. But it's located in Alberton. It's not located in New York. And it's not located in Washington. It's not located on Mount Rushmore or Los Angeles. It's located in Alberton. Why? 
Why? You see, the, the maybe you can go down that path. Alberton is a very small city with about 20,000 people. Quite small. But well, Alberton has been named by Mr. Albert, who was a Freemason. Yeah, ah. He was a member of the Solomon's Lodge Number no. 1 at Savannah, along with uh, the governor John A. Troitlin and Archibald Bullock. He served as the last provincial grandmaster of the first English provincial grand lodge of Georgia in 1785. Albert County and the town of Alberton were named for him. Ah, so Freemason, anybody? It has been erected in a town which has been named after a Freemason guy. Uh, so that, that could be some uh, path you are looking for. So these are secrets. Now, nobody knows anything where it has, does it come from, why it was erected and who paid for it. But especially it was erected in that small town that should ring a bell. Okay, so that just... For the for the people who want to go go deeper in their research, I'm not going deep into that because it's 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 not of that importance. Everybody knows the Georgia Guidestones, but uh, people usually don't ask questions, and we are here to ask questions. So this Solomon's Lodge, where Mr. Albert was a member of, is located in Savannah, Georgia, as a Masonic lodge. It was founded in 1734 by the founder of the colonial province of Georgia himself which was General James Oglethorpe, uh, coming from Great Britain. Great Britain is the famous country, not only where Peter Gabriel lived, uh, lives, but uh, all these night orders and all these uh, people. Yeah, he was uh, erecting the colonial province of Georgia, which was one of the earliest uh, states in the United States. And his lodge claimed to be the oldest continuing operation lodge in America. Interesting, huh? the Mother Lodge of the Grand Lodge of Georgia. So it's it's uh, very unlikely that it has been erected there in Alberton uh, by accident because the land was that cheap, dirty cheap. No, I don't think so. I think oh, it has some. Isn't some that interesting? The Lodge of the Grand Lodge of Georgia, and between 1734 and 1785 was the only lodge in Georgia. 1734 through 1785 so that mm -hmm. was even before mm -hmm. the french revolution and the establishment oh well it was during the establishment of the during, united yeah. states of america yeah it existed the more than De 40 Declaration years earlier of independence yes more than 40 years earlier yeah it's interesting yes so you take you take your old habits from united kingdom to the united states That's what it says. You erect a secret society on the grounds of the so-called New World. Okay, let's move on. These are the Georgia Guidestones. In English, thank you, Michael. I know it's, how many, is it eight different languages? Yeah, I, I suppose so, yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so these are the, oh, sorry. Yeah, so these are the 10 guidelines of the new age. <laughs> yeah. Maintain humanity, not mankind, huh? humanity under 500 million. Um, currently, we are, have been told that we are about 7.7 .7 billion of people or something like that. So that means that uh, just uh, only... 7% uh, of the people, so 93% of the people are useless eaters. If you divide 500 millions through 7.7 .7 billions, it's more or less 7%. It's not much. In a town when you know where maybe 100,000 people are living, 93,000 people have to get rid of according to that first guideline. In perpetual balance with nature, what does that mean? Is nature at this moment uh, proclaiming, oh, it's too much? So who's making that guidelines? Who's making the rules? It has not been printed with God's finger. It has been printed here with the... Uh, Man's tools. device, yeah. Man's devices, yeah. So second one. So the first one is 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 is, is terrifying. 
yeah, which means that 93% of people have to get rid of. That's what it actually tells. Second one is guide reproduction wisely. Oh, wise, wise as what? Sophistry or what? Wisely, you see, uh, wisely can be mean anything and it is highly likely that it's been meant as sophistry. So who's making the rules? Who says what is wisely? Who says who has to be get rid of? Guide reproduction wisely. There is nothing about love in oh, here. Look at this. Look at this, Michael. Guide mm. reproduction space space. It's not a single space. Mm -hmm. It's two spaces. Mm -hmm. Why would yeah, they so insert a second space before saying wisely? Maybe it is reproductions. I don't uh -huh. know. Could be one clue. But it looks it has been modified. It's been modified. There we go. Yeah. yeah. So guide. It is it is a guide. Yeah. So somebody is guiding you. Guide reproduction. Instead of, instead of be free to to inhabit the earth. And multiply. We have to guide. Yeah. And you see that reproduction is a term which I am very unlucky with. Because reproduction can also mean some not, not only uh, breeding, uh, but also something artificial. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, so if you have uh, babies like, in, uh, like, like uh, allegedly been done in, in, in Kuwait, yeah, where, where babies were in these, uh, uh, help me out here in that American uh, world. When, oh, when yeah, the incubators, yeah. Yeah, incubators, yeah, something like that. So reproduction can mean anything. Can also mean industrial uh, reproduction. Improving fitness and diversity. Um, once again, who's measuring what is improving the fitness of something or somebody that looks like or sounds like genetic modification and diversity? Also, some, some, some word, some noun, which can be stretched so far. Oh, well, part. improving fitness, Michael, we could say, is part of eugenics. Yeah, something like that. I said genetic modification. You see, it is a right. totally, it's totally allowed. Everybody is concerned about their health at the moment, but nobody is concerned about genetic modified food or, organ, or organisms, GMO. Mm -hmm. Nobody talks about that. Isn't that strange? Isn't that strange that nobody talks about what kind of 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 uh, of meal we are eating, what kind of food is has been uh, sold to us? But everybody talks about, yeah, I have to take take a shot, I have to take this, and I have to take that. Nobody talks about the conditions of that we are so much away, far away from nature as 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 we are in 2021 with genetic modified food, with uh, all these. Uh, uh, artificial sugars with uh, antibiotics, hormones, etc., etc. Then unite humanity with a living new language. Uh, sounds like the Tower of Babel. It is not about uh, that people have their own identity. It's about to unite humanity once again. It's humanity. It's not mankind. With a living. With a living new language, which means it is being modified all over again. Then, rule, passion, faith and tradition and all things with tempered reason. So we are the age of reason. has nothing to do with love. Ah, you know, this is reminding me of the old definition of, um, ah, what is it now? Um when you're, uh, I got to look this up, hold on. <laughs> Sorry, Michael. Yeah, uh, faith, I, I, you, you see, it's been mentioned here, faith and tradition at, in the same line. Yeah, passion, faith, tradition has nothing to do with belief. Yeah, you can, you can have faith to your doctor, you can have faith to your authorities and tradition. You see, it, it has been so whitewashed, this, this language, that everybody who reads it has a different opinion what it actually tells or can tell. All things with tempered reason. So everything has to be reasonable. 
Yeah, it has nothing to do with mercy, grace, or with uh, something like that. Uh, no, no, no. It's just about uh, faith and tradition and uh, passion. It goes back also to the first guideline, uh, maintain humanity under 500 million. What has the, has nothing to do with mercy. This is just reasoning. Oh, and not just reasoning, but tempered reasoning. Now, when I think of tempered, I think of hardened, mm -hmm. hardened reasoning, like iron you know you think of the Roman yeah, this is all sophistry. this is all sophistry here you see that next one is uh, protect people and nations with fair laws and just cause uh, who sets the the guidelines and rules what fair laws and just cause are Let all nations rule internally resolving external disputes in a world court. So it's about unite, to unite people. Yeah, it's the same with uh, unite humanity with a living new language. It, it is here a world, a world court. Yeah? A unite court, united court. And then avoid pity laws and useless officials. Yeah, once again, who's setting the standards? What are pity laws and users officials? Has it been solved democratically or is there one ruler for all, one to rule them all? And balance personal rights with social duties, which means uh, then uh, it, it is, <laughs> yeah, it, this is very dangerous because it says that your personal rights depending on social duties. You have to balance that. You don't have personal rights when society says, oh, you got a duty, personal rights with social duties, which means you don't own anything. And personal rights just can, can have the right to, to live, maintain humanity under 500 million. Yeah. In total balance with nature was the first, first one, in perpetual balance with nature. Yeah. You see... This is highly dangerous here. This is age of reasoning. It has nothing to do with mercy or love. Prize truth, beauty, love, seeking harmony with the infinite. This is uh, totally... What is truth? Mm, interesting. Yeah? Beauty. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And love, you can also love uh, evil things. Seeking harmony with the infinite. Which is the, what, what is the infinite? What's the definition? Ah, yes, it says in John 18, 38, Pilate saith unto him, what is truth? And when ah, he Pilate had said... It was. Yeah, Pilate it was. So, and yeah. when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and saith unto them, I find no fault at all. Mm -hmm. So even Pilate was uh, claiming that he found no fault with Jesus, but yet the people, <laughs> they wouldn't have it. Yeah. And you know why. So, yeah. Be not a cancer on the earth. Leave room for nature. Leave room for nature. It's, 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 it's uh, mentioned double here. Twice. In my opinion, it is the most strict and the most important rule because it is mentioned twice. Like in the Bible. No? Amen, amen. I say to you. Something like that. So it is... Verily, verily. That's right. Verily, verily. verily, yes. verily yeah. I yeah. say yeah. unto yeah. you. Yeah. That's... Yeah. Yeah. A really important point uh, yeah. that can't be stressed enough because, yeah, uh, yeah Michael. Be not a cancer it me means be not an illness to the earth. Yeah, so the earth requires healthy people. Yeah, leave room for nature. So the nature is calling that people have to be reduced because you see that is the last guideline or commandment and the first guideline was that uh, maintain humanity under 500,000 in perpetual uh, balance with nature and the last one is be not a cancer on the earth leave room for nature so then the last one you see nature in the first one you see nature if you combine the two you know what they're up to once again, 93%. 93%. Not 10 or 20. 93%. 500 million from 7.7 billion. We do not know if these numbers are correct, of course. 
It is not knowledge. We have to believe the people. This is a big, big, big difference if you believe somebody or if you got the knowledge. You got the knowledge if you have experience that it is correct. If somebody is handing over you an apple and says, oh, this is a delicious red apple, uh, please taste it, and you bite in that apple and you say, oh, it's very delicious, then you know that he is right. But if he is handing over an apple and says, this is a delicious apple, you do not know anything. You think it is an apple. Maybe it is an artificial apple. So it doesn't smell, uh, taste at all. You see, the point is that we have been handed over uh, information as truth. And it is not the fact. Most of the time, it's just belief. You just believe the authorities. You just believe anybody supreme. You just believe a scientist, a doctor, a politician. Who else? You believe the people. But it is not the truth because you cannot prove it. And if you cannot prove it, then you do not know if it is right. You have to prove anything. Yeah, And so this is the last one. I think we're going for 10 minutes now. This is the big, big, big difference between education and indoctrination. Education comes from the training of animals, interesting, from Latin educationem, a rearing a training to educate somebody. And William Godwin said in the 18th century, all education is despotism. The problem is that educational services nowadays are more than indoctrination facilities because they tell you what you have to believe, what, which is correct. They think that it's a consent. People really think that there's a consent that uh, science, for example, is not uh, being debated anymore but because it is the absolute truth, which it isn't. And we will go into extensive uh, examples here later on in the sessions. So you have to make a difference between education and indoctrination. Indoctrination is also a word from endoctrinate, from Latin, and means to instruct, to imbue with an idea or opinion, which means mm -hmm. that nowadays opinions are being sold as truth. But it is just an opinion that people say, oh yeah, uh, this uh, has been caused by that. Yeah? But mostly this is just an opinion, it is not the truth. And so our poor children are being indoctrinated. This is an indoctrination. Public schools and the decline of Christianity. I haven't got into that book so far, but I found the title quite revealing. Yes. They are not allowed to pray the uh, to pray anymore in schools since 1963 or something like that. And you see, many or most of parts of the so-called education is just indoctrination because people are not taught, oh, yeah, there's a debate and maybe it's that this way or that way. But they sell it as a truth because it is in the textbooks. But this is nothing more than political indoctrination, which is propaganda. It's just propaganda. And it's nothing new from the 21st century. It has been over and over and over again. Also, in the time when Jesus was walking on the earth. That's right. Since the beginning, when Eve was thinking that the serpent was so subtle and so clever and convinced her to take on the fruit of the forbidden tree because she wanted to be wise. She was a, a victim, Eve, was a victim of propaganda. Somebody told, told her, bah, if you catch that fruit, ye shall be as gods. And he said, wow, what a perspective. And there is an interesting song from 1979 from Pink Floyd, which is another brick in the wall, part two. We don't need new education. We don't need no thought control. And that is what we are facing soon, because when you have uh, listened to the 
former sessions of the television series. I think it was two parts or something like that. Uh, we have been mentioned here George Orwell on the one hand and Aldous Huxley on the other hand. And many, many, many more people are going into the propaganda. Edward Bernays, the nephew of Sigmund Freud, etc., etc. They say that the society has to be controlled through education, through propaganda. Propaganda nowadays um, is been renamed uh -huh, as public public oh. relations. Yes, public relations. Yes, correct. So public relations. So that people are being handed over some words, some keywords, and they think, oh yes, I'm a social justice warrior. Or you see these these kind of neologisms, this kind of new speech, um, is is having a big effect on the on the children. They really believe uh, that the planet is starving, and uh, yeah, there are too many people. You see, they really believe the age of reason. They really believe because of the indoctrinations in the school system that the age of reason has now to take place, and that the Georgia Guidestones are the truth because it has been written in stones. Yeah, so the pupils, the children are being thrown in the school system. And this is 1979, people. This is 42 years ago, when even that uh, satanic band called Pink Floyd has a teacher with a one-eye symbolism, and they are throwing the people and they're smashing the people in the churches and then it just comes out little worms, something like that, all of the same color, all unite. Yeah, unite humanity, one new speech, one court, one religion. They're all one because they are all trained like one. They are just trained. Like, that doesn't have to do anything with talents or with your ability, something like that. No, you have to obey. Just to obey. Don't question the authorities. I find that very interesting. I just found it today on the internet. We don't need no education. We don't need no vaccination. We don't need no thought control. And if you think about the situation in China, um, with social credit points and so, uh, you see, this can, can get much, much worse than that, than the current situation. But I think we're not the only ones. I don't think we are the only ones. We don't need no education. We don't need no false education. We need the biblical knowledge. We need the knowledge which is really uh, correct, which is Revelation the truth. Revelation 18.3, Michael, yes. Yes, and it says, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Again, Revelation 18, verse 3. Mm-hmm. Interesting, huh? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. This explains quite a bit. Mm hmm And this is just the, the, the beginning. And this is just the beginning of the script. We are on page 9 from 1100. So I think... <laughs> nowadays, things are so subtle that only experts quote unquote, um, can judge if the information is correct. And it has nothing to do with the vaccination thing. It, there will be coming up new agendas in the future. But at, as, at oh, least, for certain, for as, certain. because you cannot prove the things because they are so subtle, you don't see any atoms. You don't, no, you, yeah, you don't see spirits. You have to have one, you, you have to be grounded. And, and the, the, the base of all the foundation of all of, of Bread and Me is the King James Bible 1611 together with the ESOT software. And on that scale, uh, we can judge the things or the, the, the people by their fruits. And if somebody wants to suppress people or wants to get rid of the people by claiming that only 500 million people are healthy for the nature, for the environment, 
then these people who have erected that guide stones and have made uh, these uh, guidelines, um, these are supposed to kill us. Because they say that the majority of people are just futile. They harm this, this so-called planet. And there's much more coming up that the Earth is not a planet and can only not be saved. But it's every, everything is against the Almighty and his anointed. That's the real agenda behind all the agendas. It's all about the truth, and the truth is Jesus Christ. Even if you're an atheist, think about the fact that everything is 180 degrees uh, against the Bible nowadays, and it's getting worse and worse and worse, and the Bible is the only book where every prophecy will be fulfilled, and several prophecies already have been fulfilled. No other religion can offer that amount of truth. And that is why the Bible will be hated by all the governments of the world, because they reject the truth. We have extensively been talked about that in the former television series, that the government reject the truth because the government has set, set the rules and the laws and it has nothing with truth about truth. is just about what the governments or what the laws are uh, being, uh, yeah, are, are proclaiming. It has nothing to do with truth. So they can contradict themselves, but they don't care. They're just the, the laws you have to follow. And just in Revelation, we see that it's all about the, the love of money, where people are these, because it's been mentioned here, the merchants of the earth. So it's about, it's about trade. It's about making money. It's about having a good time. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich. I think you, we got a huge amount of uh, topics today, which uh, laid, I hope, at least I hope, the foundation for the upcoming sessions when it really goes about in the next episode about science in the ancient times and then in the Middle Ages and now, now, nowadays. Um, there will be so many questions uh, coming up that you have maybe also some questions uh, in, 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 in general. You should ask questions. I think uh, we are fine if somebody asks questions. It is of utmost importance that we use our brains and we, we raise questions because we can only get answers if we question. We will not get the answers uh, for free. We have to question everything. You have to question everything because otherwise you do not question uh, the things. And uh, in the Bible it is said that uh, the real Christians, they uh, question the things if they were so. I think yes. I have, I the think. Brilliance. Yeah, yeah, correct. The Bereans mentioned in the book of Acts, Michael. Yeah. So I think I think it, it was not far fetched, but we laid a good foundation for the upcoming session and uh, there will there will be topics I I I think you have never heard before or questions which have not risen up before because we have to ask questions. This is a whole session of sessions of topics to raise question. So question yourself. Who makes the rules? Who makes the guidelines? Who, who, says, who says that we are too much people? Who makes the rules? Yes, Michael, that's Acts chapter 17, verse 11. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the good Bereans, like Berean Beacon, huh? Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. So for all of you out there, sorry for my for my English and uh, sorry that I have... A, oh, you yeah, have very good English, Michael. So you don't, sometimes, you don't sometimes apologize. hard sometimes hard to keep my train of thoughts because there are so many things uh, happening at the same time. But uh, at least uh, keep on having a good time, keep on questioning things and be, 
I, I'm totally delighted if somebody has received or somebody um, had a result from his own thinking and said, oh, I've never thought about that. I've never thought about that. Why is this and why is that? And we are coming up with so many examples which have been presented as truth in our in your textbooks and which has been presented as truth by the, the media. And you have to question everything. You have to question everything. Because we are getting used by unbound by traditions and folklore and myths and legends, but it is not necessarily the truth, even if your father, your grandfather, your great grandfather has done that, done it or, or thought about that this way. It is not necessarily the truth. We have to question everything. And this is uh, Yeah, I would like to 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 have uh, people following the sessions in the next uh, upcoming things, uh, which where we go into ancient science and which has been presented to us. And uh, yeah, don't uh, don't be don't judge the book by its cover. It was maybe a hard time listening to the sessions because it's so, it's so theoretically. But we will go on and uh, have some practical examples quite later. And uh, so thank you for your time. And uh, I'm hanging it over to my beloved brother, Brett. And uh, he will close down the sessions. And I would love to hear his comments on the subject. Well, Michael, you know, we're touching on something here that is definitely considered uh, divine in the world. <laughs> you know, uh, this fruit uh, that is being produced now called technology. Uh, it is a double-edged sword in the sense that it can be used for either good or evil. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, is it not? And the, some things, they just don't change. Uh, this technology has um, received uh, so much praise and so much, uh, and uh, I want to say engrandizement. Uh, it's been made into an idol in of itself. And this is a big, big, big problem in, in the Bible, speaking of those that have faith. Uh, we should not worship idols um, because, you know, we are to witness to our brethren that uh, we worship Jesus in spirit and in truth. That's good enough. We don't need all of the excess so we need to ask these questions. We need to dig deeper into the bottomless pit of history that we live in. Uh, it is endless. And we're living at a time where all of this history is being laid open for you to study and to absorb. But there is so much of it. Uh, And it makes it very difficult for uh, a, a youth, a young child, to grasp, you know, in its entirety. It takes time. You need to be patient. And those are hard things to do when you are presented in a concrete world that is demanding of you to obey the laws and dictates of man it's the other way around it's no longer the laws and dictates of of god it's no longer the lost children of israel even you know we are definitely a, in a crisis that has been brewing for millennia it's nothing new but It is horrifyingly difficult to make sense of it. And this is one of the reasons, Michael, we do these sessions. We have come to this new question. Is science the new religion? Are we really going to stoop that low and worship this? This is the question. 
I think those of us that are familiar with the arguments and the controversies already outlined on this channel are well aware of this problem. But maybe as we reach to new listeners who have never encountered these questions before, maybe even very young people that are very confused and very upset with their own families and their own uh, dreams and goals in life uh, have come to a very stark, cold reality of this world we live in today and are asking these questions. I hope we will encounter some new listeners that have uh, never really maybe studied some of these aspects in society before, but we need to study them. We need to know, we need to be ready to do battle with the principalities, the powers, the spiritual wickedness in high places. That's what our duty is. And we do this out of love and respect. And we do this, yes, in the wisdom of the Bible, not the wisdom of sophistry, not the wisdom of casistry, cases of conscience. And we hope to catch up with you next time. I think that uh, closes the session for today. And uh, next time we'll uh, definitely delve much deeper into this bottomless pit. Is science the new religion? God bless Maranatha.